Hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here is the story of The Query Bravery. Clyde Beatty has told you many of the thrilling adventures he's experienced while on expeditions through Africa. Here is one that took place on his last safari into southern Nigeria, the land of the Bakwiri. Hot. Isn't it, Clyde? Yeah. We'd better stop a while and let you rest. Oh, no. Women who go on jungle expeditions shouldn't expect special attention. Ah, oh, but this is different, Harriet. You told me not to come along. I insisted. Now I'll be doggone if I'll hold you back. You've been a swell sport, but really, honey, we're not in any hurry. Okay. You talked me into it. <laughs> Let's sit down. <sighs> it's amazing the difference in climate between this and the northern part of Nigeria. Wouldn't be so bad if it went through humid. It'll get worse as we approach the delta where the Niger River flows into the ocean. What up? What up? Oh, great. I forgot to signal Wango we were stopping. Over here, Wongo. He probably thought something had happened to us. Uh-oh. From the look on his face, we're in for a good balling out. Mm. Wana, you stop in jungle. You no signal, Wongo. Sorry, Wongo. I, I made a mistake. No should make mistake in jungle. You're right, Wongo. I'm sorry. Three times Wongo leads Wana Beatty on safari. Three times bring back safe. No more want, Wongo. Wongo leave. Go home, country. Now, take it easy. Of course we don't want you to leave. Temperamental, isn't he? Very. Wana, stop. Wanna signal, Wango? Sure, sure, I heard you. Wanna stop? Wanna signal, Wango? That'll do, Wango. Yes, Wanna. All right. Tell the boys we'll rest for ten minutes and then move on. Yes, Wanna. I think you hurt his feelings. Oh, I've gone through this for years with Wango. He'll sulk a while and he'll get over it. What's that? I don't know. Never heard anything like it. Is it some sort of animal? Never. Well, what is it? Sounds like a streamliner tooting at a crossing. Oh, don't be silly. Listen. Oh, Clyde, I'm frightened. Kind of gives me the creeps, too. If it doesn't stop, I'll... I'll scream. Easy, baby. Easy. Wongo! Wongo, come back! What could it be? I don't know, but I'm sure going to find out. We return to Clyde Beatty in just a moment. And now, back to Clyde Beatty's adventure, The Query Bravery. Wango! Wango! You call Wana. What's making that sound? Horn makes sound. Of course it's a horn, but what does it mean? Bush people talk. Talk? Yes, Wana. Horn make talk. Tribe to tribe. Who makes talk? Bush people. Well, you said that. Bakwiri make talk with horn. Bakwiri? Well, aren't they like other Bantu people? Don't they send messages with drums? Bakwiri use drums. Bakwiri use horn. Mm, that's a new one on me. Uh, tell me, Wango, can you read what the horns say? Only Bakwiri read the language of horn. All right, Wango. We'll be pushing on in a few minutes. Yes, Wana. You can relax, Harriet. Those horns are just a variation of the jungle telegraph system. Just the same. They give me the jitters. It's only the Bakwiri talking back and forth. They're probably announcing our arrival. Is that good or bad? What do you mean? Well, who or what are the Bakwiri? Oh, just some Bantu people who've migrated into southern Nigeria. I knew we were close to their country, but I, I didn't know about those horns. Are, uh, are they savages? Well, you wouldn't exactly want them for neighbors back in Chillicothe, Ohio. They aren't headhunters or cannibals, though. That's comforting to know. However, I wouldn't advise interfering with any of their rather unusual tribal customs. Heaven forbid. Anyhow, I'm no busybody. For example, they mercilessly fulfill the law of blood for blood. Sounds horrible. It is. If a buckwiri gets hurt or killed, even if it's an accident, somebody pays. You don't mean with money. I mean with... Clyde. A... You don't mind. Couldn't we just sort of pass by the buckwiri? Impossible. You mean they, uh, 
They won't let you? Oh, no, no. It's just that there are 60 separate clans of them and hundreds of their villages between here and Port Harcourt. Oh. Someplace along the line, one of the chiefs is sure to invite us to dinner. Yes? Well, we couldn't very well refuse. Now, could we, honey? Oh, we could just say... Tribal custom, Harriet. Tribal custom. I... Oh, I think I see what you mean. I know we had to accept the chief's invitation to this, uh, uh clam bake. But how long is it going to last? <laughs> What's the matter, honey? You getting bored? Well, really. After three days, you'd think they've had enough. Those infernal drums are driving me crazy. I want some peace and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm tired of it all, too, but not half as tired as those jitterbugs out there must be. Well, they dance for hours without even a breather. I wish somebody would tell us what on earth they're celebrating. Remember, darling, out here one doesn't... I inter- know. One doesn't interfere with tribal custom. But what if this goes on for weeks? Then we sit here for weeks. Oh, my head. If only they'd stop for a few minutes. Well, right on cue. This sudden quiet. It's... It's... <laughs> now, honey, make up your mind. Here we go again. Oh, no. Quiet. Look, over there. What? Why, it's a young boy. He's wounded. Crawling on his hands and knees into the clearing. That boy's badly hurt. Why, he can hardly move. Why doesn't somebody help him? He's trying to make it to where the chief is sitting. Oh, the poor thing. The poor little thing. He can't do it. He can just barely move. He's dragging something. Can you see what it is? That's funny. Seems to be some sort of animal skin. Hey, that's the skin of a lion. A lion? Yeah, and a big one, too. What does it mean? Hey, that youngster's in bad shape. If one of those heartless fiends doesn't go out there and help him, I will. You'll do no such thing. Now, don't move. But he's just a baby. He's badly hurt. We can't interfere. Oh, Clyde, it's brutal. I know, I know. I don't understand. I just don't understand. Well, don't try. Look. He's standing up. He's on his feet. He's staggering over to the chief. Dragging that filthy lion skin. He's straightening his back. Come on, kid. Make it. Make it. He can hardly stand. Come on, boy. Ten more yards. That's all. Just ten more yards. Clyde, this isn't the Rose Bowl game. No, but it looks like a jungle equivalent. A little more. Just a little more. He's made it. He's made it. Did you find out what it was all about, Clyde? Yeah. It was an initiation. Every Baquiri boy goes through it when he turns 14. In that case, I'm surprised there are any Baquiri men. Well, anyway, the ones that make it are really men. You see, the boy goes out into the jungle or on the veldt, armed only with a spear and a knife. And all alone? All alone. The object is to bring back the skin of a full-grown lion and lay it at the feet of the chief. If he doesn't? He doesn't come back. Well, that's growing up the hard way. It isn't exactly a Sunday school picnic. Oh, that poor youngster. He got so torn up. Yeah, he's half dead. Surely they treated his wounds. Oh, they sewed him up with coarse thread. After they rubbed salt in the wounds to make nice, big, beautiful scars. Oh, no. Sure. Those scars are like winning your varsity letter at Notre Dame. This boy was lucky. Lucky? Yeah. Some of the lads bring in a lion skin without getting a scratch. That's not so good? No. The boys that make the all Baquiri team have to have scars. Do they ever try to cheat? I mean, scratch themselves up deliberately? I suppose, but if they get caught, they get kicked out of the league permanently. Oh, Clyde... And to think the teenagers back home. Yeah, they don't realize how lucky they are to be born in America instead of equatorial Africa. Wana! Wana! Get ready. Go now. Leave Bakwiri crawl. What's the rush, Wango? Bakwiri make ready. More juju. Oh, dear. Not another of those three day dance marathons. Another boy. Go for a big cat. Well, let's get out of here before we get stuck again. Oh, there go the drums. Let's hurry before it's too late. If we shove off before the party gets going good, we won't have to stay. All packed. Ready, go. Good, Wango. Glad you thought of it. Oh. What's the matter, honey? That 
scrawny little tyke standing there. Don't tell me he's the next one to be sent after a lion. What's the difference? We can't do anything about it. They can't send that weak little thing out there. I won't let them. Well, are you crazy? Now, come along. But query or not, he's just an innocent child. Now, I'm going to speak to the chief about this. Harriet, come back. Do you want to get us all killed? Harriet! Clyde Beatty will return in just a moment. And now, back to Clyde Beatty and the Query Bravery. Fortunately, I caught Harriet before she could make what might well have been a fatal scene in front of the Bakwiri chief. I forced her, protesting all the way to where Wongo and our other native boys were waiting to set out across the belt. We weren't very far from the Bakwiri village before Harriet's good sense returned. When she realized fully the spot she might have put us on, she was very contrite. I guess an expedition like this really isn't the place for a woman, Clyde. Forget it, honey. Anyone's liable to lose his good judgment sometime. The place has nothing to do with it. I realize now how foolish it would have been. I couldn't stop a tribal custom as strong as this one of the Bequiri. Would have been impossible. <sighs> no. That's what frightens me. If you hadn't been there to stop me, I'd have marched right up to the chief and demanded him to give that child a good dinner and send him to bed. <laughs> the old boy probably would have had a fit before he ordered us all boiled in oil. Just the same. Can't get the picture of that tiny tyke out of my mind. To think of him going out after a huge lion. We'll never make it. I know. Chances are some animal will kill him his first night out. Poor frightened little thing. Alone at night. Country like this. Uh, maybe it's just as well, honey. Clyde, how can you say that? Life in this part of the world is a tough proposition. Only the strong can survive. That, you see, is the purpose of what seems to us only a cruel ritual. Those natives figure if a boy can't take care of himself at 14, he won't live long anyway. I see your point, but I still think it's horrible. Well, let's forget it and think about something pleasant. Like finding a nice place to set up camp for the night, huh? Right. Lead on, McBatey. <laughs> Feels awfully good. We don't really need such a big fire, but it helps keep the flies and mosquitoes away. Oh, excuse me. That big dinner won't go fix made me sleepy. <laughs> Incidentally, what was that we had? Brisket of water buffalo. The best part, high off the hump. Mm. <laughs> it was delicious. Hold it. Hand me that rifle. What? What was that? Something in the brush over there. Maybe it's Wongo or one of the boys. They know better than to move through brush like that at night. Whatever it is, is run off. Those are our boys. Sounds like they've caught something. Wango! Wango, what is it? Clyde, it's, it's the boy, the Bakwiri boy. Wango kept the boy hiding brush. Well, you must have seen our fire. came close for protection. Oh, you poor baby. Come here. Yango, loba, yaba. No, ya, bobo, lava. Ya, ruga. Bring him here, Wango. No touch, Bakwiri boy. Oh, Wongo, don't be silly. That boy's hungry and frightened. No touch. No feed, Bakwiri boy. Here, now, now, just a minute. Let me talk to him. Him no understand. Well, you ask him if he's hungry. Well, ask him, Wongo. Bakwiri. Laba mumbo. Yaba. Yaba la bobada. Him say, let him go. Let him go. Mm, it's no use, Harriet. The boy saw our fire and came close because he was frightened of the dark. Surely it won't hurt to feed him and let him stay for the night. Well, it's fine with me, but I don't think he'll do it. Oh, try, Clyde. Please try. Wongo, ask the boy to eat with us and sleep here. No, Wana. Do as I say. Lava Mumbo. Lava Areda. He's running off. Stop him, Wongo. Stop him. Hold it, Wongo. No use, honey. We couldn't catch him now. It's good, Bakwiri boy, go. Oh, Wongo, you're as bad as a Bakwiri. Yes, Mbwana. Wongo sleep now. <sighs> oh, that's too bad, honey, but... Well, that's the way it is. I know. But... That's a lion. <laughs> it's after the boy. Right. Wongo, Wongo. Harry, stay right here by the fire. Whatever happens, don't leave it. Yes, Clyde. Wongo, order the boys to protect the camp. You come with me. Yes, Wana. 
That cat's probably been stalking the boy all evening. Let boy fight liar. There are other lions. Let's help him with this one. I'm going no lie. Oh, be quiet. Yes, Buena. All right, hold it. Hold it. We're getting close. Boy, there. Stand on the rock. But so dark, how can you see? On the rock. There. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see him. Lion, there. In clearing. Step back. Let me get a shot at him. Steady now. Easy there. Again. Lion bed? Buona. Good. I couldn't see too well in this bad light. Now let's get that boy. Boy gone. Him run away. Run... Great. This is where we came in. What Buona mean? Never mind. Let's get back to camp. Again today. That's to be expected, huh? You ready to move out? All ready. Move on, Wongo. Wonder how the little Baquiri made out last night. We should be passing the spot where I killed the big cat last night. Wongo and the boys have stopped up ahead. They're looking at something. Probably the lion carcass or what's left of it after the hyenas got through with it. Oh, Wongo, what is it? Bones. Dead lion. Lion's bones? Hyenas get it? Yes, but not skin. What do you mean? See? Signs of flesh. No skin. You mean somebody skinned that cat? Yes, Buana. Here is trail. Bakwiri boy skin lion. Him go off. That's terrible. Yes, Buana. Wango tell you no shoot lion. I know, I know you. Well, why is it so terrible? The boy will just bring the skin back to the chief. And they'll string him up by the thumbs. But why? Because, my darling, that skin will have at least three bullet holes in it. They'll know the boy didn't kill it. Oh, I see. What a mess. Come on, let's see if we can follow his trail. Getting close, Buona. Yeah, he can't be more than a quarter of a mile ahead. Look here, Buona. But what have you found? Here, fresh track. Another cat. It's following him, too. All right, listen. Let's go. Wait, wait. This cat's in trouble. Look, what up? Look. How about that? The lion's flailing around in his death throat. The boy scored a bullseye with a spear. Is he all right? Oh, he's standing there watching the cat die with the biggest grin on his face you've ever seen. Oh, my. Look at the size of that cat. It must have been the mate of the one I killed last night. Well, anyway, it's dead. <coughs> Listen to him. Let's go congratulate him. No, honey. No, he's made the grade. Let's just get out of here before we mess up some more tribal customs. <laughs> And now, here is the star of our show, Clyde Beatty. There are many kinds of bravery, but none so strange as that of the Bakwiri boys in the story you just heard. Don't miss my next thrilling experience. are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced and transcribed by Shirley Thomas, written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Tausig. Music composed and conducted by Albert Glasser. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production.